Hello everyone and welcome back. You guys have been getting in our DMs as well as commenting on some of our older videos asking if we've got any update on the VHSLE project. And well, today you're in luck. That's right, so today I'm gonna to be going over to Simon's to check out the car and give you guys a bit of an update on where they're at. They've actually made a bunch of progress on it. They're getting to the point now where they want to paint the interior floor pan as well as the engine bay and coat the underbody in like stone guard or Raptor liner. But before they do that, I want to pull all of the sound deadener up off the floor pans. So that old like tarry, bitumized sort of sound deadener that's on there, I want to pull all that up and have a fresh coat of paint across the whole floor pan. So we're going to go over to Simon's shortly. I'm going to show you a method that's a bit of a science fair project, I guess, but really effective, actually super clean. There's very little mess um, on how you can pull up the sound deadener off basically any car. If it's got that, that bitumized tar sort of sound deadener, this will work for any car. Um, if you're doing a resto or a race car or something like that, this is a very, very handy way of doing it. So stick around, we'll head over to Simon's and we'll get stuck in. down here at Simon's and uh, guys are under the pump so I was working in around them today but quick little update on where the car's at. Shoo! So as we've already seen before the engine bay is all done basically all the metal work and all the body work is done now. All the holes are sort of patched up um, everything like that. Panel's been refitted. The low fab um, windscreen cover that's been mocked up and a um, couple of small adjustments to be done in there for how they wanted to mount it and whatnot but that's all sorted out now and the oh man i could honestly just stare at these rear quarters all day they are the greatest investment i've made on this build i reckon this um, replacement panel's been done, and now it's time for me to strip all the sound deadening out. So I'm gonna show you guys a technique that I've come across. I've used it maybe once, oh, I think it was about 10 years ago. Um, and I used a garbage bag. I used dry ice in a slurry in a garbage bag to try and contain the mess. Because if you've seen people do it before, they spread dry ice here, there, and everywhere. Um, I wanna try and keep it contained. <laughs> now I think it's going to lift pretty easily because you can see some spots here like here it's all dried and cracked so it's already sort of starting to lift a little bit. Um, hopefully yeah you can see that's already lifted so hopefully once the dry ice is on there it sits on there for about 10 or 15 minutes you hear it start to lift and crackle as it shrinks um, the sound deadening and literally lifts it off the floor then I should be able to just peel it up in big chunks. So let's get stuck in. What I've got in here is about six kilos of dry ice in the Esky. And you, the pellets come a lot bigger than this, but I've actually crushed it up a fair bit. I just got in there with a hammer and just sort of like a potato masher and just crushed it up. Now the idea or the aim of the game here is surface area. You want to get as much of the surface area of this cold stuff on that. Um, if you've got air gaps or whatever, it's just not going to be super cool. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use that dry ice as well as this methylated spirits. Now you can use isopropyl alcohol. Basically, you just got to have a really, really high alcohol content of a liquid that's not going to freeze. So, so long as that's not going to freeze, which we know this won't, um, then it creates this super cold slurry. This stuff here, I think is about, if I'm remembering back to high school science, I think it's about negative 60 degrees or something like that. When I add the two of these together, it'll create this super cool liquid, which is about nine, negative 90 degrees Celsius, which is super, super cold. As you can see, I've got my gloves and my trowel here because at that temperature, it's gonna burn your skin. Don't touch it. No good, no good. Let's start mixing up some slurry in these bags, sit it on the sound deadener and start getting it off the floor.
so it's been about two hours and uh, finally finished. And I only just made it to the end with that six kilos. Six kilos would have done the inside of the car easy, but doing the boot as well made it a bit of a stretch. But um, I did get there, I did get there in the end. It's all up and look how clean that surface is. That is the swan song for doing it this way with the dry ice method. When it lifts up, it lifts up really clean. Look at that giant pile over there. I haven't weighed it, but I could almost guarantee you that'll be at least 20 kilos. So if some of you guys are doing this for a race car, 20 kilos of weight saving, is it worth it for two hours work and a bit of dry ice? Maybe, maybe it is. Now the important part for me was the boot. I really wanted this boot to come up schmick because I do want to paint it in the body color. And we are getting to the crunch time now where I do need to decide on that. So as you can see, look, all of this beautiful, very, very clean and straight, not bent, buckled, scraped, scratched, gouged. So you probably saw me giving it a bit of a love tap with the hammer to help separate it from the metal. Now do make sure it's only a love tap. Don't get a four pound gimpy and belt it because if you're doing this for restoration purposes, all that time that you've just saved your resto guy by pulling it up for him is gonna be offset by him having to straighten the floor back out again. So don't belt it, just give it a little whack. You'll, you'll feel it separate and then you can just scrape it clean off. The longer you leave the dry ice on there, the better. What it does is it just snap freezes it, shrinks it and separates it from the metal. So the longer you can leave it on there, that's why I had a couple of bags at a time. I'm working with multiple bags. You can leave that in one spot while you're working on another. Now you can just spread it all over the floor and will it work a bit faster? Yeah, possibly, but there's gonna be a lot more wastage. If I just spread the dry ice out, the dry ice slurry out onto the floor without the bags, maybe I would have got it done in an hour and a half or, or bang on an hour, but I would have used probably eight or more kilos of dry ice. Look at that, one last look, she's nice and clean. I'm gonna pack all this up into the bin. I'll give you one last look at the floor, take one last look at walk around to the car, and then it'll be time for me to get out of here. I do have a package I'm expecting, and I want to show you guys, because it's going to set this thing off. Now, where the car's at, these guys are gonna get it back on the rotisserie, flip it up, and they're going to do all of the underbody in like a stone guard, maybe wrapped a line or something like that. Um, and then we're gonna paint the floor pan, and then we're gonna get ready to start gapping this thing up for the final time, and it's this close, ready for paint. So excited. Anyway, let's pack up our gear, get on out of their way, and we'll go back to my place, because I've got something to show you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, you're so big. Oh, finally here. Yes, it's been a long time waiting for these bad boys. And I am a lot of bit excited. Yeah, it's a couple of days later now and these bumpers have finally arrived back from A-class metal finishes and I'm pretty excited to unwrap them, honestly. I sent them away in April last year. Um, they told me that if I wanted any chance of getting them back before Christmas, I'd send them then. Obviously, they didn't get back before Christmas. <laughs> they were finished um, early Feb and, you know, took a little while to get here because Australian postal system. I am... Actually, a little bit apprehensive about unwrapping these because once I unwrap them, they could be scratched and whatever, but I obviously have to unwrap them and check them, make sure they weren't damaged in transit. It's kind of like Schrodinger's cat, like is it damaged? You don't know until you've seen it. These things are gonna set the car off in terms of visual appearance. I think it doesn't matter if you spend to the end of the earth on panel and paint, if your bumpers 
and your lights and your trim pieces don't look any good, then it makes the whole car look like shit. These ones are being fully refinished, restored and re-chromed. So let's have a, a squeeze and see how they turned out. I think I might get a blanket. I want to unwrap them and put them on the concrete. Yeah, I think I might get a blanket. Hey, shop dog. What are you doing, darling? Hey? It's at this point that you just want to rip it open like a toddler on Christmas, but I want to keep the bubble wrap intact as well. We're getting there, we're getting there. Ooh. Okay, so they're in a plastic bag as well. Nice. So after taking a lot of due care, unpacking the bubble wrap, they are actually plastic bagged as well, which is awesome. That's actually really good. They were really well packaged, I've got to say. Uh, they did a good job on packaging for shipment. They have come safe and sound. Now, let's have a good look. Oh my, oh my. That is a thing of beauty. I got a little bit worried there were some blemishes, but that's actually just on the bag. Wow. Mate, they are perfect. So you can see here on the back side of this extension, you can see all the sort of rust and pitting that they couldn't get out of the back. Now, obviously that's just the back side. They probably don't spend a hell of a lot of time on that. Um, I can tell you definitely right now that it was a hell of a lot worse than that. So they have done a really good job. This front side here did have some cracking in the chrome, um, pitting, some delamination and they've refinished it. They've obviously stripped all the copper coating and everything off and refinished the bumper and re-chromed it with a flawless, an absolutely flawless finish. Even down to where these coach bolts go in, they've uh, repaired that. It's not uh, perfect. It's not certainly not flawless in that hole or this one here but they are better than they were. They have done a good job to repair that. Obviously the way that they mount to the body, they use um, some of those sort of, um, I think they call them coach bolts where they got like a button head, but they got a square backing. So it keys into that hole. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all been done. This one here being the rear bumper, sort of same thing. They've, they've gone through and made sure all those holes are nice. And those ones are actually really nice. Around that number plate light was actually quite bad on this bumper um, for pitting and you can't see any pitting on that whatsoever. That's perfect. You can see on the back side that is very, we'll call it textured. <laughs> it's very textured, which gives you some indication of how bad that bumper really was. Um, and they've bought it back quite nice. So down the bottom here, so obviously this, this is the bottom side of the rear bumper. So a lot of the dirt and silt and crap would have sat in here and, and rusted away. Um, they've done a good job of sort of bringing it back and neutralizing it. But obviously this, this here is the money shot. And that's amazing, there's not a dent like no small pin dents or anything. It's, it's pin straight with a flawless mirror finish as well. Now, I don't want to unwrap them any further from where they are. I want to keep them in those plastic bags. Don't want to, I don't even want to risk taking them out right now. <laughs> that was obviously a very expensive process to go through uh, and a long, long wait time. So 
I definitely don't want to be having to wait that long again, particularly when the car is so close to being ready to come home. I reckon maybe in the next, I'm not sure, maybe in the next six to eight weeks, the car will probably be ready to be picked up um, and it'll be brought back home for us where we can then mount the bumpers and stuff back on. And when I mount them is when they'll come out of those bags. They're gonna stay in those bags until that time. But honestly, very highly rate uh, the result that I've got here. And I was told that they were very good and I do believe it. A-class metal finishes in Lonsdale, South Australia. Not sponsored at all. I, my wallet will tell you this was definitely not sponsored. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they've, they've done an immaculate job of restoring these bumpers so that they are an immaculate finish. So that's where this one's gonna end you guys. I hope you did enjoy that little update and I hope if any of you are doing a resto or a refresh on your car, you found that dry ice method to be a handy little tip for getting rid of that pesky sound deadening. I will probably use like a car builders or a Dynamat product when I get the car back and put some new fresh stuff down. Uh, it is a street car after all, so I do wanna try and keep some noise down, even if it does add a fair bit of weight. But yeah, hopefully that helps you guys out if you're ever interested in doing it. If you do need any re-chroming done, definitely hit up A-class metal finishes, but be patient, they do have a long lead time. So that's it for now. Go to torcarb.com.au, get yourself some merch because that helps us keep the lights on in this joint. And thanks to all you guys who've ordered and your support. Until the next one, I'll catch you around.